What happens when a manga is created entirely through edgy imagery and tropes? You may get a manga where characters cry about the difficulty of their normal lives and try and be cool even though violence surrounds them to a shocking extent. Every major plot point turns out to be unspeakable violence for the sake of keeping the story semi-engaging. The accumulation of edgy manga and anime usually results in a lack of literary value and a passive reading experience. With that being said, what if a manga embraced the elements of Edge to make a story that replaces vapid characters and violence for one overflowing with powerful ideas? Tokyo Ghoul and currently serializing Shoujin X is what happens when you embrace Edge organically into your story. Both exist as ruminations on identity and repression of oneself through gender affirmation and societal barriers as the narrative develops a wide cast of characters who all look stylish and cool. Sui Ishida, the author of these two manga, is an artist obsessed with Edge. His characters sit between two worlds where they ponder the morality of each while horrible things happen to characters constantly. The imagery of his manga is a masterclass in edginess, from Kaneki's mask to the designs of each Chojin's beastification and the covers of every volume. If Ishida was a painter, then edgy content is his canvas. Since edginess is so often viewed under the pretense of no literary value, Ichida's work, unjustifiably, has often been given the same brand. Edgy content has received this label because of how most of its stories indulge in overly violent content, overly stylistic, cool-looking characters, and moody teens, while failing to make the content and characters' purpose consistent and nuanced. Essentially, Edge has equaled lazy storytelling for the better part of a decade. While publishers and studios understand that cool and violence are guaranteed to sell, strong storytelling is not. Much like the characters he depicts, Sui Ishida lives on his own as an author in the edgy space, while using his tropes to give his story nuance and consistency. Tokyo Ghoul is Ishida's masterpiece, where from its first chapter you can see how it bathes in edgy imagery. Near the end of a date with a girl way out of his league, Kaneki learns the hard way that life isn't so forgiving when Rize attacks him. This attack results in Kaneki getting a transplant turning him half a ghoul. At the end of that chapter, Kaneki remarks that if his life would be a story, it would be a tragedy. A character believing they belong in a Shakespeare play fits the bill for edginess, and the eye-popping violence from Rize's attack screams edge to the reader. Like all of us at one point, Kaneki is at the start of his own ideological journey, where he goes from letting others influence all of his choices to developing his own thoughts and opinions on the world. Even though this is something we all go through, it doesn't always make for the most engaging storytelling where you often get stories like Elf and Lead, Sword Art Online, A Comic Got Kill, who don't give enough attention to this aspect of their stories. A great example of how Ishida's experimental style helps develop the narrative instead of trying to replace it comes in Chapter 8 when Kaneki is fighting Nishiki. Kaneki has yet to fully believe in his new reality, but the violent world he has been thrust into refuses to pause. With Hide, Kaneki's best friend, nearing death, Ishida cuts to these panels of Kaneki silhouetted with images of his past. Kaneki struggles to stand up, but his close connection with Hide brings him back in the most astonishing way. This sequence checks all the boxes for edgy material, avant-garde paneling, hyper-violence, and badass moments. But Ishida makes sure that the experimental panels have purpose, here to simply show Kaneki's failure while giving the readers an emotional backdrop for why he would want to get up. The violence isn't just for shock value, because the punishing world is meant to force Kaneki 
to grow. The cool moment of Kaneki taking his first step and embracing his new power is undercut by the feeling he may turn into something he doesn't want to be. Shocking moments in Ishida's work result in character development. Kaneki's torture, the most shocking sequence in Tokyo Ghoul, is the culmination of Kaneki's inability to accept his new identity, and the conclusion of that torture results in Kaneki's first personality transformation. Shock value with purpose. Kaneki goes through many identities through the course of Tokyo Ghoul, and Ishida uses violence to punctuate these changes, where his mind melts or hardens into something new, in the same way we choose to make new ideological pursuits day to day. Tokyo Ghoul suggests that edgy media's purpose reaches further than simply distraction, but plays an important role in any healthy storytelling ecosystem. The goal of edgy media is often to live on the far side of offensive, works that are constructed so you will tilt your head back in disgust. Something like Gantz fits perfectly into that role, and at times crosses too far over the line, where offensive content turns harmful. This kind of edgy content challenges our understanding of why these controversial things happen in the first place. For the sake of criticism, we need to know the difference between edgy and mature. While there are no specific definitions of either in terms of media, their differences, I think, often come down to the target audience. Media through a teenage or young adult gaze is often categorized as edgy, while mature content is reserved for the adult gaze. As far as I can tell, the difference stems from style and structure. Mature manga has a style that appeals to its older audience. When you look at a Berserk panel and compare it to Ishida's work, you can tell that style is curated for a different age range. Tokyo Ghoul is aimed towards a younger audience by the nature of Kaneki's age, and that's where the line is drawn for edgy and mature content, even though the same care is given to Tokyo Ghoul's story as it is for these mature series. This reasoning is why I don't agree with the argument that edgy equals cringy. There are many pieces of young adult content that crumble under the weight of tropes and simplicity, but there are just as many that overflow with brilliant ideas for a younger gaze, Tokyo Ghoul being one of them. Edgy is a tool, not a symptom of bad storytelling. Ishida tightens the edgy screws that bind his world building together by making the Ghoul pseudo vampires. Edgy content in the West, aka Twilight, are synonymous with vampire stories for edgy teenagers. A sexual quality is forced into Tokyo Ghoul because of this, and he mines that for ideas about sexuality throughout, especially for people discovering their own sexuality. If Tokyo Ghoul is Ishida's edgy masterpiece, then Chojin X is his diamond. The expressive imagery that makes up Ishida's work explodes off the first handful of chapters. Chojin X is even more of a cutthroat coming-of-age story than Tokyo Ghoul, as Tokyo, the series' protagonist, acknowledges he lacks a dream and tries to carve out his own path after he becomes a Chojin. While ghouls in Chojin feel similar, Chojins play a more clear role in repression. When characters are first given a Chojin power, they often act out violently, suggesting that violence is often the way we respond to our repressed emotions. Tokyo's Chojin form is a vulture, showing exactly what he thinks about himself, but he takes his opinions and choices from others in the same way a vulture poaches food. Ishida's clarity of vision makes Chojin Jojin X, one of the most exciting manga currently in serialization. Tokyo's coming-of-age story has developed into something much more complex so far in the manga, with new chapters blowing the narrative open. Series like Chojin X should be celebrated for their ability to explore cliched tropes in imagery by giving them the nuance they deserve. The perception that edgy media lacks skill or value is one found in falsehood. Just like any other trope, edginess is a device that can be used by an artist to create meaning within their work. That doesn't mean that studios don't try to cash in on popular trends that come with edgy imagery, 
but that we should be on the lookout for those artists who will give us an honest view into a world created entirely through Edge. In the landscape of manga, there is no better author that understands how to leverage edginess as an expression of repressed emotions and uses it to explore ideas on identity than Sui Ishida.